Hi guys, uh, this is Terry David here. Um, some of you all may know me from YouTube. I normally prepare um, students for the CSEC maths exam and sciences exams, right? Um, but I have just um, finished the SEA process with my daughter, right? Um, so she did extremely well. She got 97.3 in the 2023 exam, right? Um, so I'm going to be providing um, some support for those students who are doing SEA maths, right? Um, so these solutions are being provided free for you guys, right? So I'm going to do the solutions to the 2021 exam people here. All right, so they want us to write the numeral re represented by this diagram here, right? So you need to know that this is ones, this is tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand, hundred thousand, right? So all we're gonna do, we're gonna basically write down the number. So in the hundred thousand position, you have one, two, three, four. So it's gonna be four. In the um, ten thousand, right? You have zero. You have no circles there. In the thousand, you have two, right? Um, in the hundreds, you have one, two, three, four, five. So this is going to be five. And then in the ones, sorry, in the tens, you have a, a one there. And then in the ones, you have zero, right? So this is really 402,510. They want us to write the missing number in the box, box below. So in the box, you're actually squaring the box here to get this number here, which is 64. So therefore, the missing number is going to be 8 because 8 squared is the same as saying 8 multiplied by 8 and that's going to give you 64, right? Um, Alright, so uh, third question here, we want to multiply this. So we have 305, right? And you are multiplying by 7, right? So 5 by 7 is 35. So therefore, we can write the 35 here, right? Um, then we have to work out 3 by 7, that's 21. So therefore, the answer is going to be 21, 35, right? So these are section 1 questions. These questions are generally straightforward. Uh, we have 288, and you're dividing that by 9. So 2, 8, Eight, and you're dividing that by 9 so 9 into 28 right so this is going to be 3 here 3 can go into that 3 nines are 27 right then we have to subtract so 8 minus 7 you're going to get 1 2 minus 2 you get 0 then we need to bring down this 8 here so 9 into 18 is 2 so 2 by 9 is 18 and when I subtract I'm going to get this Right? So there's no remainder, but the answer is going to be 32. You want to write 37 over 5 as a mixed number. So basically, we have to take 37 and you're going to divide that by 5. Right? So 7 by 5 will give me 35. When I subtract this, I'm going to get a remainder of 2. So therefore, um, as a mixed number, it is going to be 7. The remainder was 2, so it's 7 and 2 fifths is going to be my answer, right? All right, so that's question 5. Question 6, we have uh, 3 and 5 ninths minus 1 ninth, right? So you have 3 holes here, right? But then you have 5 over 9 and you're trying to subtract nine, 1 over 9, right? So there's no boring involved here, right? Um, so all we need to do is to take 5 over 9 and subtract 1 over 9. Now both of them have the same denominator and when you have a scenario like that we can just subtract the numerator. So 5 take away 1 is 4, right? So therefore the 5 9 is able to take away the 1 9 to give me 4 over 9. So the answer is simply going to be 3 and 4 over 9. That's it. Question 7. Um, draw a circle around the 4 that has a value of 4 tenths. So this is tenths here, right? Now this here is your 10th position, right? That's your 10th position here. So therefore, if you want to circle 4 tenths, this here is going to be that 4, 
right? And when we say four tenths, we mean four over 10. That's what we mean, right? So that's the value of that four. Right, right, so we have greater than, equal to, and less than. So 0 0.63, 0 0.36, all right? So 0 0.63 is actually bigger than the 0 0.36, so therefore it's a greater than sign. So that's be this. Question nine, 40% of 500. So 40%, right, multiplied by 500. That's the same as saying, now 40% is 40 over 100. And then multiplying that by 500 over one, these two zeros can cancel with this. 40 by five, right, four fives are 20. So this is gonna be 200. That's the answer here. Question 10, uh, we have some bills here and you wanna buy a t-shirt. What is the cost of the t-shirt? Well, all we're gonna do here, we're gonna just add up all these numbers, right? So you have, let's start with $5, right? We add in all of these. Uh, you're gonna add one dollar. Then we have twenty. Then we have our next one dollar and a fifty. All right. Now I'll do this in two parts. Um, zero zero. All right. So that's five and one six and one seven. So this is a seven here. Right, so this is $77, that's in terms of the bills, right? Then let's add up the coins now, right? So you have 25 cents, right? And you're adding that to another 25 cents, so 0 to 5. Then we add in that to another 25 cents, right? And we have 310 cents, 0.10. 0 0.10 and 0 0.10 right so let's add this up here so 5 10 15 so there's a 5 here right 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 right so we have a dollar and five cents right so therefore we're gonna add the 77 dollars to the dollar and five cents And what we're gonna get here now, we're gonna get five zero seven one one is eight seventy eight dollars and five cents. All right. Uh, question eleven. What is the most appropriate standard unit for recording the height of a room? Well, they said most appropriate, so we're gonna put meters. All right. If you wanna measure the height of a room, you should use meters. Complete the statement. So we have 17.42 kilograms. Now, if you want to convert this into grams, you have to multiply by 1,000. So that's 17.42 multiplied by 1,000, right? So if you all know how to multiply by 1,000, you're going to move your decimal place one, two, three places to the right. So this is going to be 17420 grams, right? A watermelon on a scale is shown. What is the mass of the watermelon? So the scale here is measured in kilograms. And if you look at where this reading is here, it's exactly between three and four. So therefore this is gonna be, you can say three and a half or 3.5 kilograms. Kelly arrives 10 minutes after the start of a test. No additional time was given. How much time did Kelly have to complete the test, right? So she reached so the, the exam started at 8.45 and she reached 10 minutes after that, which means that she actually reached at 8.55, right? That's the time she reached to write this exam, right? And the end time is this. So if you want to figure out how long she has to work on the paper, it's going to be 9.40 minus 8.55, right? Now... When you, in this case here, right, we have 40 minutes and you have to subtract uh, 55 minutes. So you can't do that. So you're gonna borrow. So this will become eight, but you have to remember when you borrow, you're borrowing 60 minutes. So 60 plus 40 will give you 100 minutes here. That's what you have here. So basically it is 100 minus 55, 
and that's going to give you 45. So therefore, she actually only has 45 minutes to complete this exam, right? All right, question 15, which of the shapes below has a uniform cross section? So when I say a uniform cross section, right, once you cut it, any law anyway along this um this solid what's going to happen is that you're going to see the same cross section all the time right now the only shape that's going to actually give me that is going to be b right once i cut it along um let's say if i were to cut it this way or this way or this way this here is going to be your uniform cross section which looks like a square to me right you can't get that with any of the other solids right Question 16, how many quarter turns, so the hour hand of a clock, right, um, below, moved from 3 to 12, right? Now remember the hour hand is the shorter hand, yeah? And you move from 3 to 12, how many quarter turns? So the first turn here is 190, then if you continue, you make a second 90 or a second quarter, and then the last one here, so you're making three quarter turns, right? So it is three quarter turns in an anti-clockwise direction that you're making. 17. Which angle in the shape below is less than a right angle? So a right angle, you should know what it looks like. It's 90 degrees and it looks like this. So we're looking for any angle that is bigger than that. So the only angle that is actually bigger than 90 is C, right? So the answer has to be C. Question 18, the mean of five numbers is 86. It's sum of the five numbers. So if you want to get sum, right, all you need to do is to take your mean and you need, sorry, the mean is 86, right, and you have five numbers. So to get the um, sum, all we do is take 86 and we multiply that by five. So six by five is 30, right? So you put zero here, carry this three. Eight fives are 40 plus three. That's going to give you 43. So the sum of those five numbers, right? The sum of those five numbers there is going to be 430. Question 19, what do we have here? Complete the tally chart. So basically the only thing missing in the tally chart is for us to write down the scores, right? Um, by using tally. So one, two, three, four, put a slash. One, two, three, four, put a slash. That's 10 already. 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 15, we're missing 2 more now, and that's it, alright? Question 20, table below shows the places a group of students visited, which place represents the mood? So the mood is the one that occurs most frequently, so when you look at the numbers here, we have 12 students attending the museum. So the mood is not just 12, it has to be the museum, right? That's what we need to say here. Right, so that takes care of section one. Section two now. Uh, we have a, a bill here, right? And we want to complete the bill, right? Now, let's start with the first missing thing here. We don't know the unit price of the salad, right? But you bought two salads and the cost was $72. So if you want to get the price of the, um, the, the unit price of a salad, all you need to do is to take $72 right and you're dividing that by two so this is going to be three by two is six seven take away six is one i'm going to bring down this two so two into twelve it will give you six so six two is a twelve and when you subtract this you get zero right so thirty six dollars will be your unit price for your salad right the next thing missing for the bill here now we need to know the total so to get the total, all we need to do is to add up all of the, um, all of the numbers on the right-hand side here. So this is going to be uh, 40. And then we have 4 and 2 is 6 and 2 is 8. And then we have 7 and 2 is 9. So this is $98.40, right? All right, a banner is painted in three colors, right? We have three, three fifths blue, one ten red, and the remainder is white. What fraction of the banner is painted white? So we have blue, right? And that is three fifths. We have red. 
and that is 1 over 10 and we have the remainder which is white all right now here's the thing you have three fifths here and you have one tenth so what i would do i would try to find the equivalent fraction for three fifths in terms of tenths so to do that all right if you want to get 10 at the bottom here you're going to multiply by 2 so if you want to work out what number should be on the top you have to multiply this by 2 as well so 3 twos are 6 right so in terms of blue you have 6 over 10 in terms of red you have 1 over 10 so what you have here is 6 over 10 plus 1 over 10 that's 7 over 10 so therefore the white right white is simply going to be 3 over 10 right All right, Jerome has 17.5 meters of rope to make swings. Each swing requires two meters of rope. How many swings can you make from this rope? So all we need to do, if this is your total length, and you know you require two meters to make the rope, sorry, to make the arm swing, all we're gonna do is say 17.5, and you're gonna divide that by two. So this is gonna be eight, two is a 16. Um, seven take away six will give me one right then you have to bring down this five here right so um two into 15 right hold on eh? remove this dot here yeah two into 15 right two into 15 is going to give you seven right because seven twos are 14. when i subtract this i'm going to get one right now, we don't have anything here, but you're going to bring down a 0 here, right? So 2 into 10, that's going to give you 5. So 5 twos are 10, and when I subtract, I'm going to get 0. So therefore, um, how many swings can you make from... So if you notice, you're getting a decimal here, right? So the number of swings... Right? Is only eight. You can't make nine, you could only make eight swings, right? How that makes sense. Question twenty-four. Uh one third of a number is eighteen. What is five over six of that same number? So one third of a number. So let's draw a little diagram here with some thirds, right? So you know that one over three right is 18 right and to figure out the actual number right because if 1 third is 18 then the actual number will be 18 multiplied by 3 8 3 is 24 1 3 is 3 and 2 5 so this is the actual number we're talking about here right now we want to find 5 6 of that number so you're going to take 5 over 6 and you're going to multiply that by 54 over 1 right now six can go into 54 nine times so nine by five is 45 all right so that's 24 question 25 um cindy jenny and cindy picked some 72 cherries together and jenny picked okay so the popular unequal sharing questions that students do like all right uh so we have jenny all right and we have cindy right and they picked a total of 72 right as the total amount of cherries that they picked right jenny picked 16 more cherries than cindy so let's call cindy share box and jenny will be box plus 16 right now um it's 16 more than so that's why we put plus 16 and we want to figure out how much did each of them get so <clears throat> so basically when you add this to this you should get 72 so what you're really doing, you're adding two boxes plus 16 to give me 72, right? So what we're going to do is first remove the 16 from the 72. So you're going to say um, 72 minus 16, right? We need to borrow here. So this will be 6. So it will be 12. 12 take away 6 is 6. 6, 6, take, 6 take away 1 is 5. So that's 56, right? So therefore, two boxes, right? Is equal to 56 so if you want to get the value of one box you're going to say 56 divided by 2 right so 56 divided by 2 right so let's do that so 56 divided by 2 is 
So 56 divided by 2. This will be 2 twos are 4. When I subtract this, I'm going to get 1. Let's bring down the 6. So that's 16. So that's 28. Right? Alright, so this is um, 28. That's the value of one box. So basically, uh, Cindy will be 28 cherries, right? And Jenny, right, is going to be 28 plus 16. So let's do that somewhere in the corner here. 28 plus 16. 8 and 6 is 14. 2 and 1, 3 and 1, 4. So that is 44. Right, so Jenny is going to receive a total of 44. Um, what do we have here now? We have two bills. Are we talking about iPad, smartwatch, cell phone? Right, so in the first bill, you have one iPad, so I'm just going to call it i, plus she has three smartwatches, so three smartwatches plus four cell phones, right? And that is a total of $3,028, right? That's what the first bill is telling me. A second bill, that's Sam's bill here. You have three iPads, right? Plus five smart watches, plus six cell phones, and that gives you a bill of 5032. Now, they want me to work out the total cost of one iPad, one smartwatch, and one cell phone. Now, we have to do a little reasoning here, right? If you look at those two bills, if you were to add the two bills together, right? This is what I would do. I would add the two bills together. So, this would be a total of four iPads, right? Plus eight smartwatches, plus ten um, cell phones, right? And that's going to give me a total of... 8 and 2 is 10, 3 and 2 5 and 1 6. So 8060 is the price of 4 iPad, 8 smartwatches, and one sec. Right? Actually, wait, hold up. I'm not watching something here. Right? That's not. Let me just do this over here. Right, let, let me do this part over here, right? Uh, let me start with Sam's bill. So, three iPads plus five smartwatches plus six cell phones is equal to 5032, right? And then for Maria's bill, we have one iPad, right? Plus three smartwatches plus four cell phones, and you're going to get 3028, right? Now, just now I added, but I realize um, I don't need to add. I should really subtract, right? Now, if you were to subtract these two things here, right? These two bills. Uh, three iPads take away one iPad. You're going to get two iPads, right? And then five um, stopwatch smartwatches minus three smartwatches will give you two smartwatches. And then six uh, cell phones minus four, you're going to get two cell phones. Right, and then when I subtract this, so let's do this here. Uh, five zero three two minus three zero two eight. Right, all right. Now you can borrow from this three here, so this will be two, and this will be twelve. Twelve minus eight is four. Two minus two is zero. Zero minus zero is zero, and five take away three is two. Right, so this here is the cost of two um, iPad, two smartwatches, and two cell phones. Now the question I want to know the total cost of one of each of them. So all you need to do is to basically, since everything is by two here, to get the final answer, I just need to divide 2004, I just need to divide that by two, and you're going to get a, a value of 1002, right? I hope that, that makes some sense. So we don't need to find the actual individual cost for each one, right? Because the question wants us to find the total cost of one iPad, one smartwatch, and one cell phone, right? So that's 26. Question 27. 
Right, so this particular question here, we have some marbles, right? Um, the number of marbles he has is fifth, is more than 50, but less than 100. So what they're doing here, they're giving us some conditions, right? Under which um, we're trying to work out the number of marbles that Jesse has, right? Uh, so condition one is telling us something, right? So in condition one, right? Um, We're looking at more than 50, but less than 100, right? So we're looking at from 51, right? Going up to 99. So that's how many marbles he has, right? But we don't know exactly how much as yet. Now the second one, they said when you place it in groups, so this is our next condition they're giving us here, right? So condition two, right? Um, when they are placing groups of 10, you get a remainder of three. So therefore, if you think about this, right, if you divide by 10 and you're getting a remainder of 3, the possible numbers in that interval here has to be 53, 63, 73, 83. These are possible numbers here, right? Um, 83 and we can also go up to uh, 93, right? These are the possible numbers. So based on what we know so far, it has to be one of these numbers, right? And any third condition now. Right, um, they said when it's placed in groups of six, so you're dividing by six now and you get a remainder of one. Right, so what you can do, you can do a quick test. Right, um, so if you're dividing by six, we need to get a remainder of one. So if you try, you could try each of them if you want. Right, so if you divide by six, right, this is going to be eight sixes of 48. Right. And if we subtract this here, right, what we're going to get is, we're going to borrow from this, this will become 4, this is 13, 13 take away 8 is going to give you 5. So you're going to remainder of 5, right? So therefore, 53 is out. Let's try 63 now. Right, you divide them by 6. So this is going to be 10, 6 is uh, 16. And when I subtract, I'm going to get a remainder of 3. So therefore, that is out, right? Because remember, you need to get a remainder of 1. Uh, if we try 73 and you divide by 6, right, um, this will be 1, right, 1, um, 6 is 6 here. When I subtract, I'm going to get 7 take away 6 is 1. I bring down this 3, I have 30. So 2 multiplied by 6 will give me 12. And when I subtract, I'm going to get a remainder of 1, right. So therefore, that looks like that's going to be our answer. Right, 73 is going to be our answer here, right? Question 28, um, what do we have here? Two students are asked to use manipulatives to add four-fifths and three-tenths. Fraction pieces and counters were used, right? So we have some information here, and you want to add four-fifths and three-tenths. So four fifths, right, and three over 10. Remember, you need to write them as an equivalent fraction. So what I would do, I would write the four fifths as something over 10, right? So five by two will give me 10. So therefore I need to take the numerator and multiply by two as well. Four twos are eight. So if I wanted to add four fifths plus three fifths, we need eight over 10 and three over 10, right? Now, when you look at the diagrams here, we need to see which diagrams making sense. Um, so let's see. In the first diagram, that's Priya, you have four fifths here, right? That's okay, right? And you're adding that to three over 10. So her diagram looks okay when I add these two here, right? And she is getting um, one whole and she's getting one tenth, right? Now let's add, let us add our 8 over 10 plus 3 over 10, right? When you add this here, you're going to get 11 over 10, but 11 over 10 is actually 1 and 1 over 10. So therefore, if we look at Priya here, she has 1, that's 1 whole, and she also has a 1 10 here, right? So therefore, based on the information that we are seeing here, um, her answer makes sense. Her answer is correct, right? Whereas if we look at the other diagram, we have our four fifths here. This is three tenths, 
right? But the answer itself doesn't make sense, right? Because what she's done, what Sharda has done here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So she's basically, all she's doing is adding the numerator, adding the denominator. So that's incorrect. That's not how we add fractions, right? So 29, Amanda left school at 3.20 and arrived home three quarter of an hour later. What time did she arrive home? So 3.20 p.m., right? And we're looking at three quarters of an hour. So that's three quarter of 60 minutes, all right? So you all should know that three quarter of 60 minutes is 45 minutes, all right? So therefore, we just need to add 45 minutes to this. Right now, when I add this here now, you're gonna get uh, 65, right? But the thing is that 65 minutes. Remember, in one hour you have 60 minutes, right? So therefore, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put five minutes here, right? And we're gonna carry the one hour that we just got. So this is gonna be 4:05 p.m. Right? You have to be very careful when you're adding, um, or when you're trying to do any calculations involving hours and minutes. So that's 29. Question t, t. What is the sum of the lengths of A and B? Right? Um, so we need to find the length of A. So A, the ending point is 24, and the starting is 18. So this is going to be 24 minus 18 right and this is going to be six centimeters in the case of b you have a starting point of 20 point 20 and a half or 20.5 and you're going up to 25 so this is 25 minus 20.5 right now you can check this here without doing any kind of calculation this is one two three four that's four and a half Right, so that's 4.5 cm, but we want to find the sum of the lengths, so it's going to be 6 cm plus uh, 4.5. Right, so this is 0.5 here, 6 and 4 is 10, so this is 10.5 centimeters. All right, question 31, uh, we have a roadworks company. It paints 20 lines on the highway, right? Um, the lines are 1.5 meters in length and two meters apart. The roadworks begins painting from the point E. What is the distance from the point E to the 20th line painted, right? Right, so this one is not, not as bad, right? So if you're starting at the point A here, right? Now they told us they paint in 20 white lines. Now each white line is 1.5 meters. So this is gonna be 20, right? Multiplied by 1.5, right? So zero by five is zero, two fives are 10. Then we have to shift. So zero by one is zero, two by one is two, right? So when we work this out here, what are we going to get? 20. Right? So this is going to be 300. Zero, zero, right? But you have one decimal place. So therefore, that is exactly 30 meters. So that's the total number of white lines. Next thing we do, we need to do, we need to look at the spacing. Your spacing now is 2 meters. But the spacing between those 20 white lines will be 19. So it's going to be 19 multiplied by 2. 9, 2 is 18. 1, 2 is 2, and 1 is 3. So that's 38 meters, right? So therefore the total distance from the point E, right, to the end of the 20th line will be 30 meters plus 38. And that will give you a total of 68 meters, right? 32, right? Um, we have five cyclists completing a race. Uh, Nazra won the race and was 1.35 minutes faster than a cyclist who plays second. Now, with these kinds of questions, you have to try to interpret it properly. If somebody wins a, wins a race, it means they have, the, they have the smallest possible time. So when you look at the times here, right, um, the person who has the smallest time is actually Chloe, right, or Cleo, right, that's 30.45. 
Now, Nazra, Nazra won the race, right? And she was 1.35 minutes um, faster. That means her time would have been 1.35 minutes less than this 30.45. So you have to take 30.45 and you have to minus 1.35. 5 take away 5 is 0, 4 take away 3 is 1, and 30 minus 1 will give me 29, right? So Nazra should have completed this race in 29 minutes, 29.1 minutes. All right, question 33, draw the faces of a triangular prism, right? So we're talking about a triangular prism here. Right, so on a triangular prism, right, uh, if you all know what it looks like, you have basically uh, two triangles. Right, this is what a triangular prism looks like. So if you want the faces, you're gonna have to draw two identical triangles, right, and then we're gonna have to draw basically three rectangles, which are all identical as well. Right, so those those are my faces for my uh, triangular prism. Next one, we want to complete the shape here, right? So we know the line of symmetry. So we have one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna draw this line here. Then we're gonna come to this point here. Right. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we go one, two, three. Four, five, six. Right? So that's it. That's my figure here when I complete this using the line of symmetry they gave us. Question 35. Uh, what percentage of the class chose the mood? Right? So we have a uh, tally chart showing the food chosen by 27 students. Um, so we're looking for the mood here. Right? So in terms of pizza, you have five. Fried chicken, you have five and four. That's nine. For the root T, you have five and three is eight, and this one you have five. So the mode now is actually the fried chicken. Now they want the percentage, so that's gonna be nine over the total, which is 27, right? And they want a percentage, so you have to multiply by 100%. Now nine over 27 is actually one third, multiplied by 100%. So this is one of those uh, fractions that you need to just know or learn off what the percentage is. So one third is actually 33 and a third percent. Right? Question 36. Uh, so we have a pictogram here. And they said, incomplete pictogram, you have a total of 105 toy cars by four boys. Right? And they told you that one car is seven toy cars. Complete the pictogram to show the number of cars showed by legs, right? So all we do, we count how many cars we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's going to be 13 multiplied by 7 toy cars. So that's 7 trees are 21. 1, 7 is 7 and 2 is 9. So you have a total of 91 cars being shown on the diagram. So to find out for Lex, we're going to take 105, and you're going to minus the 91, right? 5 take away 1 is 4, 10 take away 9 is 1. So we have 14 cars. Now, if you know each car represents 7, it means all you need to draw here is 2. Right? So that's it. That's all we need to draw here for this particular one. Right? So that takes care of section 2. Right. Section 3 now. Uh, Macy shared plastic bottles and straws between group A and group B. The number of bottles given to group B is two-thirds the number given to group A. And for every four bottles Macy gave to group A, she gave five straws. Alright. So... Uh, the number of bottles, so let's look at bottles first. They said the number of bottles given to group B was two-thirds given to group A. So what you need to do, you need to work out two-thirds multiplied by 24 over 1, right? 
this 3 can go into this 24 8 times so this is going to be 16 right then so we can work out the total here 16 plus 24 for example is 10 2 3 4 this is 40 right now in terms of straws now they said uh, for every four bottles Macy gave to a group she, they were given five straws so every four so what we're gonna do here for this one you're gonna say all right 24 divided by four you're gonna get six right so 24 divided by 4 will give me 6. So you should get 6 straws here. Right? Uh, sorry, not say, I'm saying that wrong. Hold on. Okay, right. So for every 4 bottles, right, she gave them 5 straws. So every 4 bottles. So the number of 4 bottles she has in this scenario is 6. So therefore you have to take that 6 and multiply by 5. Right? So this is going to be 6 multiply by 5 so that's a total of 30 straws you're gonna have here right um, for this next one here well based on the number here you know the answer for this should be 20 right but you can work it out as well you can say 16 bottles divided by 4 you're gonna get 4 and if I take that 4 and I multiply by 5 I'm gonna still get a 20 so that's another way you can work this problem right Question to the eight now. All right. So in this question here, we have um, we have Lenny and we have let's take other guy's name Ravi, right? So the diagram is showing the time taken for Lenny to leave his house and reach the school, right? So part of his journey is walking and then he's taking a bus, right? Uh, what time did Ravi leave his home so that both of them reach this park place junction at the same time? Now, they told us in a question that um, school starts at 8.30, right? But Lenny reaches 10 minutes early. So therefore, the time that he actually reached will be 8.30 minus 10 minutes, right? So that's going to give you 8.20, right? That's the time he reaches to school, right? Now... If he reaches the school at 8.20, now the bus ride has taken 20 minutes. So therefore, at this point here, at Park Place Junction, the time is actually 8 o'clock at this point in time. Right? Now, they also told you that Ravi took 12 minutes less than Lenny to reach this point here. So we don't know where Ravi lives in, right? But he, he come in here and he's taken 12 minutes less than Lenny. Right? So what we're going to have to do now, we're going to have to say, okay, 25 minutes right minus that 12 minutes right because it, it took it takes Lenny 25 minutes to walk from his home to get to park place right so five take away two is three two take away one so it takes a total of 13 minutes for um for Ravi to actually reach here 13 minutes right that's how long he's taken from wherever his house is to reach there right the question wants to know what time did Ravi leave leave his home Right, so all we need to do is to take 8 o'clock, that's 8 a.m., and you need to subtract 13 minutes from this. Right, and that's going to give you an answer. So you borrow one hour from this, so this becomes 7. So this is going to be 60 here. So um, borrow one from this, so that's 5, and this is 10. 10 take away 3 is going to give you 7. 5 take away 1 is 4, and 7 take away nothing will give me 7. So therefore, Ravi needs to leave his home at 7.47 a.m. in order for him and Lenny to reach this junction here at the same time to get that bus. Right? So that's the answer for question 38. Right? So on the grid below, connect the dots to form a quadrilateral with one line of symmetry and no parallel lines. So one line of symmetry and no parallel lines. So we talking about a kite so if you want to so it's a quadrilateral so it's a four-sided figure so what i would probably draw for them i would probably draw this right there may be more answers but this is one possible answer right so this here is your kite yeah so we only have one line of symmetry in this that's a vertical line here right 
and then they said draw the line of symmetry on the quadrilateral for part E. So to draw the line of symmetry here, right, what I would do, I would take my ruler and I would draw a line going down here. This here is my line of symmetry, right? So that's 39. And question 14. What do we have here? The incomplete bar graph shows the number of fruits sold in a school's cafeteria. So you have oranges, Portugal's, banana, and mangoes, right? Um, the number of Portugal's sold was 96. Okay, so that's already on the graph, right? The number of mangoes sold is one to the number, so we can work out the mangoes, right? Which is one to the number of Portugal's, which is 96. Right, so this can go into this three trees are nine, two trees are six. So you have 32 mangoes, right? The mean number of fruit sold is 60, right? The mean number of fruit sold is 60. So, based on the information we have here, right? Um, we have 40 oranges, and okay, so. Right, let's go back here. We have a much 40. Right, and Portugal, right, is 96. Right, so we just missing one, um, one fruit that's a banana. We don't know how many bananas we have, right? Um, but what we do know, we know what the um, what the mean is. So therefore, you can find the sum of the the fruits that you actually sold. So you take the mean. And you're multiplying by how many fruits we have. We have four fruits. So that's 0 by 4 is 0. 6 4 is a 24. So this is 240. Right? Now what I would do now, I'll add up the number of mangoes, oranges, and Portugal's. So this is 32 plus 40 plus 96. 6 and 2 is 8. 9 and 4 is 13 and 3 is 16. So this is 168 in total. So what we need to do, we need to take the 240, that's the total number of fruits sold, and minus the 168, right? So we start borrowing from quite here. So be 14, we borrow from this, this becomes 13, and this is 10. So 10 take away 8 is 2, right? Uh, 13 minus 6 is 7. So you're gonna get a total of 72 um, bananas. Right, 72 bananas. Right, so now we need, we need to complete this bar graph here now. So we're missing bananas, which is 72. So 72 will be here. Right, so you need to draw this using a ruler. Yeah? So that's 72 bananas, and then how many mangoes? We had 32 mangoes. So 32 mangoes will be here. And that's it. So that takes care of all the solutions to the 2021 SCA maths exam, all right? So don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, guys.